Welcome everyone to another episode of the Farmcast. I am our guest host this episode, Troy Randall, Precision Ag Manager, joined by Hayden Fox, a product specialist out in our south region. And today we're going to be talking about scene spray. So Hayden, what we have here is a Ultimate uh, 616R equipped with scene spray. So from a base level, what is scene spray? Uh, where did it come from? What can we do with it in our operation today? Yeah, so scene spray is just that. So when we're running through either fallow, corn, cotton, or soybeans, the machine is able to identify a crop and then the machine spot sprays anything that it does not identify as a crop. So on this machine in particular, this is our scene spray ultimate machine. This machine's a little bit different than most. It's got a dual tank configuration. So not only are we able to see and spray weeds as we're going through the field, we're able to apply two different tank mixes at the same time. So we have the flexibility to either broadcast two different tank mixes at the same time, or we can see and spray and broadcast at the same time. You'll notice on this machine as well, it's got the 120 foot carbon fiber boom on this one. This is exclusive to see and spray ultimate. Um, so we've got get improved boom track uh, performance with the lighter boom on this machine to keep the cameras within uh, operating range. From kind of a base level, I guess, where did scene spray start? Or how long have we even had scene spray? Or where, where, where did scene spray, scene spray really start out as? Scene spray uh, on the John Deere machines, it started out with the selects. So the scene spray selects are just fallow only. So just green on brown scene spray. They've been on the market for, I want to say about four years now. A couple of years ago, John Deere introduced Scene Spray Premium and Scene Spray Ultimate, which is our green on green technology. So as I mentioned, that gives us the, com the compatibility with in-season crops and the capability to run in standing crops, standing corn and soybeans. We've also got a little creative with Scene Spray and been able to use it in crops that haven't been quote unquote approved through deer yet. We've have ran it in Milo with some pretty good luck. and. Um, I think some guys are running it in edible beans as well. Yep, I got so. one guy that's going to try it or trying it in edible beans to see if it makes sense or not because it's, you know, uh, what they're spraying right now is a little bit of a less expensive product so they're trying to weigh is it worth the is yep. it worth the cost of seeing a spray versus what they're putting on uh, with that application. So, yep. In, yep. in edible beans. So we've seen a lot of good things come out of the scene spray machines. Last winter, we installed a handful of scene spray premium kits and we have a couple more scene spray ultimates that are out on the market since last year. Everything we've heard from them has been positive. Guys that have ad adapted scene spray technology have really found a home for it on their farm. And you talk to most of them, they wouldn't go back now that they've ran it for most of the season. So we've seen some pretty impressive savings numbers uh, coming from some of these applications they're making. I think anywhere from 40 to 60 percent has been about the consensus on on chemical savings. So. We push chemical savings a lot, but this technology also allows us the capability to go in and use some more potent chemicals to kill some of the weeds that we've been fighting resistance issues with, uh, without the possibility of, of crop damage and without the high cost of the chemical that these guys are using to control some of these hard to control weeds. So I guess when it comes to scene spray, I know it's been kind of a, almost kind of a generational shift or just a, a big change in how customers are used to just broadcasting the whole field i guess i got quite a few handful of guys in my area running it so what's been probably the biggest challenge or how have guys kind of overcome that hurdle of almost using this as a different method not just taking their broadcast and scene spraying with it what's how have they gone in have they kind of got in and thought about you know how can i change this do something different versus just uh, are they successful if they take a broadcast recommendation and scene spray that, or are they having to pretty much totally rejig their whole thinking when it comes to this this machine and what it can do? Yeah, so there's a there's a lot of talk about chemical practices and farming practices in general. The consensus we've heard from most guys, they're still going to go in there with a residual pass, a broadcast pass, like they would uh, normally. But then with scene spray, we a lot of guys are thinking that maybe they can come back in with something like a status that's a fairly expensive chemical that works really well to control some of these weeds. Some of these higher dollar or more potent chemicals to come in and, and zap some of these resistant weeds that we're having issues with. So the biggest shift in thinking or the shift in learning is trying to figure out how to load that sprayer and how much to load it with. I know that's everybody's uh, hardest thing to comprehend is how do we figure out how much we need to load. The nice thing with these machines is after you run them through the field, you get a weed pressure map. And so the more that you run these across the fields and the more maps you get, you start to get an idea of kind of what, what to load on the machine. And you can kind of notice trends across fields in terms of how much chemical you need to plan on taking with you to the field. But the other nice thing that has kind of been somewhat unrealized is with these machines, being able to spot spray, uh, the productivity has increased quite drastically as well. Rather than having to load 
you know, once a field or twice a field. Uh, the customer can go out and load and we've had guys do it, go out and load and then spray for a half a day before they have to come back and refill. So they can really get across a lot of acres uh, in a short amount of time. And then with that also, you, on a broadcast application, usually you've got a second guy that's helping run water, run chemical, help tender. That eliminates that second guy to an extent. So it's been, uh, there's been quite a few un, unrealized benefits until you actually started seeing these things run in the field. Yeah, I remember hearing a story from a success story back east from last year with a customer that was running one of these. I think it was back then, correct me if I'm wrong, but our limitation last year was 12 miles an hour. Yeah. They're running a scene spray sprayer at 12 mile an hour versus their conventional sprayers at 16, 17. They were actually covering more acres with a scene spray rig per day going slower only scene spraying versus broadcasting and having to spray refill spray refill so even going slower and the nice thing our max speed now is 14 miles an hour yeah yep. yep. so we're so up I, to up to 15 so we can cover even more acres yeah. than we were so like that past, customer so. from last year he could probably he's probably spray he's even seeing more efficiency gain from that yep. increase in speed so yep absolutely and that's one thing that we've started to realize too that as more time goes on deer has really push this whole philosophy of it improves over time and it truly does we've there's been a lot of improvements just in the short you know couple years that seeing spray technology has been on the market so it's encouraging to see how quickly this stuff's evolving and and it just continues to get better for for our growers so so we have a kind of a select option of crops right now so we have fallow wheat we have corn fallow soybeans, corn soybeans and cotton. cotton but we don't have a lot of cotton in our area so we won't worry, won't worry yeah. too much about that too but hopefully down the road i know wheat is a big one uh that's on their radar for next crops um, we have some others especially crops hopefully they work on down the road too like i said it's it's all pretty much software it's machine learning so yeah. as they feed more images into the system the more it can learn the more we can benefit from the system down the road so it's really yeah. truly it gets better over time and that's pretty pretty very true with these machines because yeah. as the software gets better we can utilize them in more crops too so i had alluded that we uh, we've got quite a few cn spray premium machines out this season i think there's more to come we've done a lot of demos so what cn spray uh, premium is rather than ultimate that's that bolt-on uh, precision upgrade kit that we've talked about in the past so We've had a, a pretty high adoption rate of those units or those kits. It's fairly an, an inexpensive way to get into scene spray technology and the nice thing about that is it retrofits back to a 2018. So if a grower is curious about how it'll work on their operation, they don't have to trade sprayers to realize the benefits of scene spray technology. So we've got a handful of premium units out in the field this year. We actually just did some demos last week and before we were done with the demo, a customer was asking how quick they could get a couple kits because I mean, it's just for them, they're a large, large dry land farmer and it made uh, almost too much sense to, to put one on a sprayer or two that they have so they can get across their fallow acres and uh, I think the the more time goes on, the more kits we'll see out there for sure. Yeah, but, some of my customers that have got a premium kit, that's kind of what, what sold them on it is as, as cheap it was and the possible return on investment they see down the road because it was kind of like almost a no-brainer, why not do it? Because even if I don't use it right now this year, I have it on the sprayer, I can use it down the road yep. for certain, for fallow especially because it's a lot of the guys will we just got done with weed harvest around in our neck of the woods, so we're going to start seeing a lot of these machines going out, seeing yeah. spraying fallow. So we'll be curious to see kind of what savings they see, how clean yeah. the fields are, and what what they can do with that. And that's when we kind of plan to do some demos and training around that as well, too. So yep. yeah, we've had real good luck with demos so far. So. Yeah, so you kind of alluded to the fact that it's a precision upgrade, but new for this year, yep. we can order on new machines, can't we? Yeah, correct. So we can order seeing spray premium on a brand new machine out of the factory. We can order it on a Hagee as well this year. The only limitations are the same ones that we still have with this machine right now. We're, we're stuck at 120 foot boom width, but like I said, we've got tank sizes to fit everybody's needs. So we can go all the way from an 800 to a, a 1600 gallon machine, just depending on what what the operation needs. And then as I mentioned too, we can retrofit clear back to 2018 um, on sprayers. So not just a small group of people that, that are compatible for seeing spray. So switching gears a little bit and thinking more about how we operate it from the cab, I guess the biggest thing and kind of the biggest controversy around scene spray has been you know, how you actually run the system or what it takes to run the system, which is at license units. So can you kind of walk through quickly what those are, how those work and how it works now versus how it's going to be different for next year already? Yeah, yeah. So as of right now, as Troy alluded to, as we run this technology, we have what we call license units. So basically when we're spraying a fallow field, um, it's, it's charging us a dollar per acre for fallow, three dollars for corn, um, four dollars an acre for soybeans, and four for cotton as well. 
So basically the way it works is today we pre-purchase those licensed units ahead of season depending on how many acres the customer thinks he needs to spray. If he runs out of licensed units at the end of the season or midway through the season, deer doesn't cut him off. We just have to add more licensed units as time goes on. Next year, starting at the end of October, beginning of November of this year, uh, we're, deer is changing the model a little bit on how, how we handle these licensed units. So if we were to take a 100 acre field, for example, today, uh, say a fallow field, we would be charged $100 for 100 licensed units, one licensed unit per acre. Moving forward from November, if we take that same 100 acre field and we only spray 20 acres and we don't spray 80 acres, then you, what deer is doing is you pay for what you don't spray. So it would only cost us $80. And so we've crunched a lot of numbers and done a lot of figuring from demos and fields that our customers have ran. And what we have seen is there's honestly not gonna be a, a price difference really per se between the two business models. And in fact, there's been quite a few cases where Weed pressure was higher and the savings is gonna be higher because there'll be a lower license unit charge next year. Yep, yep. So that's kind of the way it works now. We get asked, do I have to pay for license units when it's time to broadcast to? No, the answer is no. That's just strictly for C and spray. So even with the C and spray ultimate, you can take this machine out and you can still broadcast two different tank mixes at the same time if you wanted to, or just run it in a conventional mode uh, with one 1600 gallon tank and there, there's no license unit cost associated with that kind of what they're gearing towards is almost, you know, leave, turn it on and leave it on. That way you get the full value of it throughout the entire season, whether you're seeing spring or not. So it just makes it easier, a lot easier on our side, on the customer side, to just be able to fully utilize that technology a lot easier without having to worry about units, the certain crops, things like that. So just turn it on and leave it on. So yep. you make much, much nicer. So. Yeah, yeah, it will be. I think it'll solve a lot of questions and headaches that we get at this day and age from surrounding licensed units, I guess. So kind of stepping back real quick, one thing, you talked about earlier was weed pressure map. So those are something we can utilize when you are seeing spring, they're very cool. They give you a very good, you know, high definition view of the map, a layer we can look at an op center, you know, where your clean spots are, where your weedy spots are and pretty much everything in between. And I've even had a few guys want to utilize those, you know, for more than just spraying for other things as well. So, but I did notice when it came to those, the only way to get those weed pressure maps is when seeing spray is, is enabled. Mm -hmm. So we have to have it enabled and using it for to get those uh, weed pressure maps. So that is one, one kind of trade off there too, because I did have that question. Well, can I get a weed pressure map without running a scene spray? Unfortunately yeah. not. So we've even, even had some guys ask about, they almost want the weed pressure map without spraying. So they thought about going to run water or something like that. So just kind of getting getting crafty, but it's awesome to see, you know, this thing is such a different change in how we're mm -hmm. used to just going out and spraying, just going out and spraying. It's a whole different business model. You know, it's, it's awesome to see how different customers are kind of wrapping their heads around this to tailor it, how to fit their operation. Some are even changing their whole operation. Some are, you know, just doing a lot of different things and just trying to think about, you know, how they can fully utilize a premium system. And we got right. one guy, one customer that's really taken on the ultimate and they're fully utilizing both tanks pretty much every single pass. Yep. So they're really taking it. Uh, it's, it's awesome to see what they've been doing with it too and really fully take advantage of that machine because to be honest, they were someone that probably weren't even in the market. We didn't even think right. they were in the market for an ultimate yeah. last year. Yep. You went out and demoed it to them, showed it to them and they bought it. And I think they will never ever go back to anything less than it moving no. forward so <laughs> no that's pretty that's that's the neat thing too it's like when john deere first introduced exact apply that whole step over of getting guys convinced that exact apply was worth extra money and that there was a benefit to it it's we're starting to notice the same thing from sea and spray the guys are stepping into sea and spray aren't going to go back to a conventional sprayer after this yeah this is like so. all that this kind of takes a little bit to get, get those first adopters but once everyone sees the benefit of it realizes it it's like they're never going yep yeah never going backwards so thanks everyone for tuning into the farmcast thanks hayden for giving us a overview of the sprayer and the scene spray technology next in the next video we're actually going to do a walk around of this ultimate machine so check out that video next click it wherever it might be uh, i'm troy randall with the farmcast like the video if you like what we're doing here we'll see you in the next farmcast <laughs>